Hey everybody, um, and welcome to the latest episode of the Coffee and Craft Podcast. I'm your host, Bernadette, um, otherwise known as Eco Geek, um, all over the internets. And I'm coming to you from my craft room in Vancouver, BC. And I have my coffee, and I've been gone for a week extra um, than I should have been because of sickness. So I have lots, of, lots and lots to tell you about. So we will get started in just a second. I wanted to show off my new mug that I got. Um, we went to Ikea and got some new furniture the other day. So I got saw this mug and had to had to get it. I was fairly low on on coffee when we went to Ikea. So I thought while I was there I should try try theirs out. I got the uh, the medium roast Patar, I think. This is the ripped open package. It was is a solid air compressed package of coffee. It's it's quite delicious and I've been enjoying enjoying it a lot. Um, so if you're in the need for some coffee and you're at IKEA, highly recommend. And I also wanted to apologize if this episode is more choppy than even my episodes normally are. I am still recovering from a cold, so I might have to edit out some sniffing or some coughing. Um, but that's why that's why the podcast was so delayed because I was sick and up until earlier this week I couldn't really talk for longer than a few minutes without coughing so clearly doing better but <laughs> it just wasn't in a space where I could podcast but extra week means that I got more done than I w thought I was going to be able to get done so yay okay so I'm just gonna jump right in to finished objects I have moved things around a little bit so I have like a little bit more space and okay so I finished my garter yoke baby cardigan that I was knitting out of Tracy 2 um, this is a very simple pattern hopefully you guys can see it's very ooh squishy garter it's all garter <laughs> I the original version of this pattern is just a garter yoke and then the rest is stockinette with a garter hem. I changed it to just be all garter because I needed something that was just plain that I could take around with me. And this suited the bill perfectly. Um, the, the yarn is Tracy 2 by Imperial Yarns. It's a woolen spun uh, Columbia blend. So it's really, really nice and squishy. I knit it on my Nova Platina needles, which because of the garter and the dullness of the needles was a buttery combo. And was fantastic. I did knit the seam or the sleeves flat and seam them because who wants to knit tiny baby sleeves that are garter in the round? Not me. So <laughs> I knit them flat and then seamed them together and yeah I copied the whole reason I did this in gray and did the ribbing and everything the way I did it is because I saw a project that was a gray version of this sweater like this so I entirely copied someone else's project <laughs> but hey if someone else does an amazing job why not um, and I just put these really cute kind of mother of pearl buttons on it which I think work really well so this and the baby booties that I knit for this particular mama are going to hopefully find their way to her um, and sorry this is blowing out as much as it is I tried to adjust the light but it's either like too much or too little so I thought too much was better because I have so much to talk about I'm gonna try and be a little bit faster to be more uh, aware of my time but I'll try to not go too fast I re just realized I didn't mention that if you're looking for show notes they're down in the doobly-doo uh, they will there will also be a link through to the page in our Ravelry group where you can get a direct link to the patterns but if you just want to know like what yarn and needles I used or if I'm talking too fast you need more info just down in the down bar so the next baby sweater I finished I had only just barely started last time I talked to you guys was this rainbow version of the play date by tin can knits so this is the zero to six month size I believe me of the future will hopefully correct myself I knit it out of West Yorkshire Spinners Rum Paradise and some opal that I had in my stash and this um, this was such a fantastic knit like I said last time I have never gotten so many comments on public transit while knitting this um, 
that I have with any other project I've done on public transit. <laughs> I take transit everywhere for the most part because I, well, I technically don't know how to drive. I have gotten my learners before and driven a little bit, but I, um, I have some pretty bad car anxiety. So I'm working on getting over that and learning how to drive, but for the most part, I take public transit and I knit on public transit a lot. And this got so many comments from other knitters and then also people I just didn't want to talk to. <laughs> you think headphones would be a good indicator that I don't want to talk to people on public transit while knitting, but apparently I still have a very friendly face in which people want to talk to me about my knitting, including random homeless people, <laughs> which is great at five o'clock in the morning when I'm going to work. Anyhow, <laughs> tangent. This sweater, fantastic knit, super easy. You pick up the sleeves and you knit them down. Um, so very, very easy. Didn't have to set in a sleeve at all. Perfect. I did do a little bit of yarn management to try and get the colors to match up here and to get the sleeves to be the same. I, like, I knew that the striping up here was gonna change. The yarn is self-striping, so that's why it kind of gets a bit thicker up here. Um, but I wanted to make sure that the colors matched up as much as I could. Back's a little bit thicker as well. And then the sleeves are obviously a little wackadoodle. But I think because it's a fun, crazy baby rainbow sweater, I think it works. Um, I went with tiny little, tiny little wooden heart buttons on the front, which I think suit it very well. And now that this is done, I can also meet up with this mama and pass this along. Um, mm -mm. Boop. I'm so happy. So with that rainbow sweater, that means that the next babies that are coming aren't until June, I believe, June and August. So I can take a tiny break from my baby knitting and do some selfish knitting, which is very, very motivating. Because <laughs> especially with the, um, the spring sock yarn stash stash down cal i've been wanting to cast on more socks for me and more sweaters for me and just all the stuff out of fingering weight for me <laughs> which i will talk about a little bit more in a tiny second but with all that motivation i also finished oh i also finished my technical well i these aren't my first pair the tenenbaum socks were my first pair but i finished my Christmas Eve, oh, these has a bad side, there it is. <laughs> Finish my Christmas Eve cast on. I'm so excited. <laughs> I, well, when the stash, this yarn had been in my stash forever and I was so happy to have cast it on. And also it's February. <laughs> my Christmas Eve cast on should have been done months ago, but babies were a higher priority. But now Christmas Eve cast on finished. So this yarn is Berry Colorful Yarnings, um, her 12 Days of Christmas. I don't think she is dying anymore. I could be wrong, but that's the impression I got from her social media. Um, but Berry Colorful, colorful Yarnings. Um, so each stripe is a 12th day of Christmas. This is technically the second day. Um, and then once it hits 12, it turns around and goes back the other direction, which I think is so cool. I was a huge fan of this and I can't wait I'm so excited to be able to put these in my box of socks now and try and knit some non-Christmas socks so they can actually stay in my box of socks. Um, I decided to go with the yellow heel because the five golden ring stripe is yellow and that's the best part of that song. Uh, <laughs> so my my nerdy Christmasness came out with doing a, a, um, a five golden ring seal. I don't know if you can see, but it is sparkly. You definitely can't, but it's sparkly. Um, and I was very excited about these and I'm very happy that I can now put them in my box of socks. And now I can cast on a new pair of socks because I finished these, right? That's how that works. So I'm very excited. So because I finished so many things, I actually have very few, um, very few current whips. Um, I am trucking along in a pair of socks for my boyfriend for Valentine's Day which I don't think you guys have actually seen at all. So I am knitting the Weasley Homestead socks by Erica Luter, and I clearly have a hoe. So I'm gonna put this up close so you can hopefully see the texture, maybe. 
Um, it's essentially an elongated rib, which makes a sort of waffle stitch, um, which for this yarn is perfect. This is just some online, oh, I thought I had the label, just some online super sock that um, is, it's got a very exciting number colorway. It's uh, 1502. Um, I have had this yarn in my stash almost as long as I've been knitting. I actually bought it four years ago um, at Bad Anna's. I think it was on sale because it's brown sock yarn. No one wants brown sock yarn except my boyfriend, apparently. Um, it's one of those yarns that's infused with jojoba oil and aloe vera, and normally I can't feel that stuff in sock yarns at all, but with this, I totally could which was really interesting and a really fun kind of knitting experience. I have my hoe, and then I have the second sock um, up past the heel. And it looks not as fun, not on the sock blocker, but I do have that guy past the heel and hopefully I'll have these done because these are supposed to be Brian's Valentine's Day socks. This pattern is normally knit from the cuff down with the, I think, Eye of Partridge heel, um, just like the Hermione's Everyday Sock. But I am a toe-up knitter, so I went toe-up and I just put in a, uh, a flegal heel flap, which is a nice triangle, and then went farther up the leg. And yeah, I don't have a ton to say about these. It's a really great pattern. I think it works really well with this yarn because it's not really self-striping, and if I'd done this vanilla, I would have died. Like, this is, this is not one of the least interesting colorways in the whole world. This is, ugh. this is when I'm happy that like yarns like this are Brian's exception colorway wise um, and not his go-to. Like he tends to like, can you guys see these? Oh, you can. Like lots of bright colors and like purples and oranges and things. And then there's occasionally ones like this one, which is like black and orange and like all brown. <laughs> but it's nice that he's a, a lover of color. Makes my life easier. But yeah, adding the stitch pattern to these made these fly, clearly. Because um, I'm almost done, and I think I cast these on last week? I think, something like that. The only other whip I have really actively been working on ugh, is my giant scrappy blanket for my dad. Because his birthday is coming up on the 20th, and in my head, I want to have this done for his birthday, because it was his Christmas present that didn't get done. So, I've been trying to chug along on this. Dad, if you're watching, please stop watching. Um, I'd like there to be some surprise. <laughs> some surprise in this if we can. Um, but I'm almost through all the yarn that I had set aside for this monstrosity. Um, so for those of you who don't know, what this blanket is, is I am using the Granny Stripe Recipe by Attic24 and a giant 10 millimeter hook. <laughs> and I was holding um, yarns double, sometimes triple, um, and just crocheting up a giant granny stripe blanket for my dad to help get all of this acrylic out of my stash. Because I love my dad, but he's not super great at hand washing things. <laughs> and I wanted to make him a, a like, great wash and wear blanket that I had no emotional attachment to. Um, so I love my dad, but he's also a bit of a bachelor frog. Last time I showed you guys, I have a progress keeper on here somewhere. There we are. I was down here, I just finished this crazy rainbow section and was going into the blues. I started adding in some solid super bulkies I had in my stash. So I now have this giant white section, and I have some purple, and some more solids, and then I was working through some grays and yellows that I had. So now we're up here, and I am currently adding in some Bernat Roving I have that's an acrylic wool blend. It does technically say that it is a hand wash, but I believe that it is that they recommend that because it is a single ply and with machine washing, it will probably pill like a mother. So <laughs> I um, but the good news is, is that don't particularly care <laughs> if it pills. That's not the point. If it felts also a little bit, not a huge deal. Um, I don't think he's going to wash it that much. I just want him to have the ability to wash it if he needs to. The, the gray and the white are also some more Bernat roving. 
This is some cozy wool, some other random acrylics. That's cozy wool again. Yeah, so I'm just checking along on this. I'm really hoping to have this done for the next podcast because that will give me time to give it to my dad for his birthday. I don't know how I'm going to wrap it. <laughs> I think I might just have to take some yarn and put a giant bow on top because this won't fit in any packaging ever. But yeah, so we're, it's now long enough. It's like almost, yeah, like two arm lengths on me. So about my wingspan. So that's exciting and way, way too long. So that's that guy. It's working on my dad's ooh, giant blanket because I finished um, my stripy pair of socks and I'm going to finish my boyfriend's pair. Um, I've started planning, started scheming, if you will, for more like what I want to cast on next. And I thought I'd share with you my future knitting plans because I think that's fun. Sock wise, because you always have to have a pair of socks on the needles. I'm going to cast on a pair of Valentine's Day ish socks for me out of these guys. I have taking it is just some good old um, Fortissima Mexico yarn that I got a couple of years ago. Ooh, there you go. Um, it's in the color 9095. It's very exciting. And I'm just going to knit some Vanilla is the New Black socks. because so I've tried a pair for Brian and I want to see how the fit is because he's not the best reviewer of heels. I'd like to know how the heel fits me and get more of like a, a knitter's perspective on the heel. Um, I did just take, this is what I tend to do for my Vanilla socks a lot, especially if they come in 100 gram balls that are pre-wound because I hate the commercial pre-wound balls. So I'll always wind them up into cakes because I like knitting my socks in stereo as opposed to like on the needle at the same time. I separate them into two cakes. Um, I'm going to do these toe up. I think I technically use the vanilla reversed vanilla is the new black heel. That's my plan for that because then I will have a Valentine's Day pair of socks for me and they look very Valentine-y with all the pinks. Not normally a huge pink person but in my socks I do like to add a bit of pink to my wardrobe. Mainly not a big so pink person because my skin can get quite red and it looks weird on me. So <laughs> um, I am also going to cast on a, I had a winding party last night. <laughs> uh, so I have all of these wound up. So I'm also going to cast on some Astrid socks, which are some color work socks by, sorry, Nordland. Um, so they are just like a simple every other color work, uh, every other stitch color work, and then they have like a Nordic inspired cuff. I'll hopefully put a picture in. So I had one ball of drops fable fable in this blue. So the blue is going to be my main color. I'm going to use some lime pram sockies that I have in white as the main contrast. And then I was thinking for heel toe and cuff, I was going to either do here, bright yellow. Which I kind of like, it's very bold. Or I was thinking, I have this mini that I picked up um, when I was down for the yarn crawl in Bellingham in March, May last year. Uh, I have this mini from Cedar House Yarns that I got at Northwest Yarns. And it's just, it's her sapling sock sprout apparently in her ginger color. This guy. My only worry about this is I don't know if I have enough. According to the yardage that is listed in the pattern, I'm good because there's 110 yards in here. There's only 23 grams. And normally for like contrast toes and heels, for toes, like it's normally about five grams to do toes, heels, cuffs. And I don't think that this is enough yarn. I have tons of this, um, but like color wise, Mm -mm -mm. Like this is a little bit more subtle. This is also a hand dye, so it has a little bit more dimension to it. But I do kind of like how kindergarten-y that is. So, opinions anybody? These or this. Um, like I said, I'm just worried about running out of yarn on this. 
Um, according to her numbers, I should be okay, but I'm not going to be doing the same gauge and I'm going to be doing a different heel. So like I'm a little bit apprehensive and I'd rather have more than less. So that's why I'm leaning towards these right now. The other future knitting I have planned is I want to cast on a perfect crop top by by Canary Knits, who is Teresa Gior or um, Gregorio. But I want to knit it as a full full sleeve sweater. So I'm going to use her pattern as a recipe and then knit as long of a sleeve as humanly possible. So what I'm going to do is I have these two skeins of Riverstone Knits in her Lonely Planet colorway, which I've showed you guys before, which is so pretty and I love it so much. It's so speckly and gorgeous. Um, and I just have on her regular, it's just a sock yarn, 75-25 wool nylon. It's not super soft, which I kind of want in the body of a sweater. Um, not that it's rough. It's just like generic wool. It's not like a merino. So I, these are two different dye lots because when I bought the first one, I didn't realize I wanted to knit a sweater with it. So what I ended up doing is I got her to dye me a second skein <laughs> about a year ago for Fibers West last year. Um, so they're two different dye lots. So in order to help them blend, I'm going to alternate skeins through the body and I'm going to knit the top down version because it goes bottom up or top down and I want to get as much use out of the yarn as I can. So I'm also going to put in contrast ribbing in just this Cascade Heritage kind of teal color. So that's going to be all the ribbing, so top, bottom ribbing and the sleeves. So I'm going to knit this top down and knit the arms as long as I can. When I get for the arm, get to the arm separation, I'm going to make a note as to which skein I'm alternating with um, so I can try and blend it in with the sleeves as well because I may have to alternate on the sleeves uh, depending on how much yarn I have. So I'm going to save a little mini whatever yarn is separated from the sleeve so I can blend that so it's not like a harsh line. So that's that future knitting. I'm very excited about this. I have swatched. Um, the pattern is written for a 3.25 uh, millimeter needle to get a 24 stitch per four inch gauge. Um, I got a 28 stitch with that needle. So I'm gonna go up to a US four and then I'm gonna do the ribbing on a smaller needle. I'm gonna probably do the ribbing on a 3.25 then do the body on a four millimeter. Um, yeah, because this is a bit of a thicker sock yarn. So I think that's probably why that happened anyhow so that's that future knitting um and once i finish those socks for my boyfriend i can cast all this on with reckless abandon i'm so excited <laughs> i know i should be working on other sweaters and other things that i've already cast on but i wanted to cast on some stuff for the um for the the sss cal <laughs> and fingering weight sweaters because I'm also looking forward to spring and it not raining forever. So I wanted to get at least one fingering weight pullover kind of going so I can wear that in the springtime. So there is that. Um, well, I'm thinking about the SSS Cal. Um, Naomi Bush Bushnan. Oh, I'm so sorry. Naomi, the designer of the Spellbound Socks has donated a copy of her pattern to be used as a prize for the SSS cow, which I'm super excited about. So that's the first prize to come in for that guy. Most likely um, be donating a bag and a set of stitch markers for the cow as well um, as a prize. So that's a thing. I will go through my, I'll do some stash diving and figure out um, what fabric that's going to be and sew that up hopefully. Um, it's been really great to see everyone's stash diving and knitting and working on their their sock yarn and it makes makes my heart grow three sizes to see everyone knitting socks and I'm so happy that everyone's enjoying the knit so far um but keep knitting your fingering weight items or crocheting it's not just knitting if you want to crochet something in fingering weight go for it um and it doesn't have to just be sock yarn it just has to be fingering weight that's just the spring and we like the three s's the alliteration was nice I don't have any sewing this week, but I did have some finished spinning I wanted to show you guys. 
Mm -mm -mm. So I'm very excited that I got this done because this stuff has been on my wheel since around this time last year. These guys are part of the same bat. The bright color, the rainbow, is a rainbow bat from Crafty Jacks. Um, my bobbins just weren't big enough to fit it all on one, which is why they're separated into two separate skeins, uh, which means at Fibers West, what I will probably be looking for is a jumbo flyer. So I have, it's like I have large bobbins, I just don't know where they are. Um, so I should be getting one of those for plying. Um, so yeah, the rainbow colors, ooh, I can't hold both of them at the same time. <laughs> The rainbow colors are a bat from Crafty Jacks, who is a local dyer. Oop. It is very thick and thin, as you guys can see. The yellow is just stuff to hold it together. In the gray is a Falkland from West Coast Color. They got in a big bag at Knit City last year, two years ago. A while. It's been a while since I bought bought fiber um but it's quite thick and thin which I kind of like it's very squishy the Falkland was done in more of a worse uh woolen prep um so I spun it with a little bit more of a long draw um because the rainbow was on my wheel for so long I don't remember what I started spinning it as I am a self-taught spinner so I also don't know technical names for a lot of the stuff I do but I'm trying to learn um <laughs> But the bat, because it was a bat, obviously, it was more of a worsted prep. Or not worsted, woolen prep. It's more of a woolen prep. So I think I tried to give it a little bit more air, which is why it is very nice and squishy. My plan with this is to knit like a boomerang style scarf um, to really show off the gradient um, in its entirety, which I really like. I think it's really fun. And it's a pretty good interpretation of a Vancouver... Vancouver spring of mainly gray with pops of color because <laughs> we are having our like one sunny day today although we've actually had a couple of them and it's rained for months guys although I guess I shouldn't be complaining because Chicago and the east coast is currently under like 1200 feet of snow so I shouldn't be complaining it's sunny and I'm in a t-shirt so could be worse <laughs> so that's my finished spinning um Wanted to see, I still have the label, which I think is funny. So this is Crafty Jacks. This will focus, there we go. Crafty Jacks Boutique. Um, and it is, what should you say? It was a 126 gram bat that was a mix of BFL, Coriadel, Merino, Tessa Silk, and then Sparkle, which was great. The Sparkle, you can kind of see in bits and places, but I mainly like the rainbow. The sparkle was a bonus. But yeah, that's my tiny little hand spun yarn baby. Hoping to get some sewing done in the future. Um, I wanted to sew up a couple of emery dresses and then just some basic skirts because I'm getting very excited for spring. Um, in these few days we have where it's like 10 degrees. <laughs> for me, if it's like 10 or 12 degrees for a couple of days, I'm like, it's springtime. No more tights. Game over. <laughs> so just waiting... Oh, maybe I'll actually, I oh, should cut one of those out maybe later today because I have the apartment to myself. So I'm just going to edit this podcast and then maybe do some spinning, maybe do some sewing. Who knows? It's a long weekend. Wow. Yeah. So thank you, um, everyone, for tuning in. I really, really appreciate you tuning in after the little hiatus I had because of my cold. I will see you all in two weeks with another episode of the Coffee and Craft Podcast and keep knitting all your fingering weight things and getting those getting your stash busted, um, and happy knitting. Bye.